We continue our grievances at dinner. The short one is teased, the thin one maligned, rivalries rekindled, grown children disowned. The holiday meal nearly ended. We abandoned turkey bone and gristle, cranberry sauce sweet and bitter as blood and surrender one by one to the children, urging us out to play Araby. Araby is like Frisbee, except it's just a circle that you throw. My son and ex-husband have gone to new families. Only my brother and sister and children and the sturdy man I now love stand with me in the lengthening light to toss the plastic ring that rises as if to go over the sun, though it glides up in a slow loop only and down, passing from hand to hand. The brother who has tormented me tosses carefully now so that I will catch and throw to the child between us or to my sister who, with her great bulk, hoards all that she has lost yet lumbers to catch the ring as the circle widens like a ripple or shrinks to hold something we've never known, how to be together without rancor, as if life could be just this easy and the family we're given by birth or by choice is the right one for us, the only one, and this life, this one life, is enough. Okay. Um, I used to take a yoga class, and one day the teacher said, I want you to imagine what would happen. Here's the death poem, if you were dead. So she led us through this exercise, and that's what the story is about, this poem. It's called When Spirit Leaves. Feel your body slowly closing down, the instructor says, as we lie on mats in a dim room. Gradually your limbs become numb. Life is draining out of you. Your spirit begins to rise above your body. Look down. Note what you see as you leave, move away into the next room. But I don't leave and see only the slack body under me as I look down. It's emptied and cooling. Its blue staring eyes are glazed. Its lips slightly open. Its belly button like a thimble to hold wine and underneath the now slack skin, hip bone racks, their width balancing the birth hive between, and the chest double pillows that once rested new life and old, the backbone pieces, each fitting the next, able to sway or turn, and the thigh to thrust up, and the stomach tub where the troll of old grudges sleeps, Below it are sacks cuddling eggs and the passages that opened once a month and a furl of fringe. And there's the nub hiding in its nest of brush, hungry and hoping. I want to take back this body I so often disparaged. Feel life rising from marrow. Know the breeze in the brain still brings questions, gentle answers and move those piano key hands, music echoing in the wrists. The odor of sweat I daily washed off, give it back. I want to lie down on top of this body, sink into it, feel again its twisted toe, its aching knee, the sun-spotted arms that once reached out, 
fingertips that caressed a rough beard or a baby's damp toes. I want to comb its frazzled hair, tend its ragged fingernails, and embrace this body as no lover has or even could till now. That last part is the, the, you know, the new age adage, you have to love yourself before you, know, you can love someone else and someone else can love you. Well, this is the, close, the closest I've ever come to figuring that one out. <laughs> I, you know, it was just an, an imaginary trip, but, um, you know, poets have imagination. And it really, really got to me. So um, I'll read a schmaltzy poem, and um, I have a couple more. Um, I have a grandson, and uh, he, he's the first grandchild, and, and so my... Um, son, daughter-in-law, you know, they wanted him to be exceedingly smart, you know, but I don't think he is, actually. I don't, I don't think he's going to be. <laughs> but this was when we thought he would be, so this is how hard they were trying. It, it's called H, the letter H. Letter like a breath or a pant or the sound that the wind heads on old maps must have made, blowing the ships toward the edge of the world. <sighs> Your breath is that strong, my boy, born beyond what nature would willingly allow. To look up at me, your five-month eyes twinkling, mischief already there. Hi, Ryan. Hi, sweetie, I say. Your gleam grows brighter as you tuck your chin and smile. I almost don't hear the soft breaths you make with a grin, hardly moving your mouth. Your mom leans around my shoulder, whispering, that's his high. Ridiculous for sure, but we tell you how wonderful you are, how clever to make that sound a barely heard breath or first salutation, a flute that awakens us to bring you into the circle of loved ones speaking and spoken to. <laughs> the, kid, the kid has a sense of humor, though. He did even then. I don't know. That, that still makes me think he might actually be smart, but he doesn't show many signs of it. <laughs> In fact, he's pretty slow. He goes to nursery school. Um, so the, I'll read this one for, maybe I won't read it. Are there any people, who, well, there's one who's been married a long time. And you probably have. A few, maybe. Well, this, this is my idea. I haven't. So this is my idea of what it's like if, if you have been married a long time. Staying together four seasons. At work, um, this fellow sat next to me said that his sister said, you should always stay with a man through four seasons to get a good idea of what he's like. The white snow against gray clabbered, love and money unfolding, the two of you come together without warning when all you want is a warm body next to you at night. But soon robins appear, and why not? It's February, little lives returning at a time when a man stirs in his heart as if scratching for something beneath dirt. The house is swept clean in spring, a new cottage you explore. Unpacking more, you stumble and break the first glass. Who cleans it up seems important. Curtains sag on the street. A child trips past you, twirling her hints of new life. In summer heat, so volatile over the flower beds, fields, fireworks in your heart, sparklers and sprinklers, long dancing nights. In September, you're there to break patterns. The house has grown round and your children make spokes leading out. 